Hello, and welcome to Pokemon Ecology, hopefully the first video in a long series. Today we'll be looking at Skarmory, which I chose as a sort of challenge as well as a setup. As many know, Pokemon's Pokedex entries are questionable sometimes. And on top of that, Pokemon breathing fire is not something we have anything close to in the natural world. Skarmory with its natural armor and incredible speed is a good example of this, but I'll get into why that's foggy later. Without further ado, let's begin. Skarmory is a stout avian Pokemon with a rather long neck standing at 5 foot 7 and 111 pounds. It has a horn atop its head and a strange shaped tail. On either side of its body are four wings that operate independently of each other. The wings operate separately. Looking at the black and white sprites we can see each feather thing moving separately from one another. This isn't to say that it can fly with only one of each, but it does mean that it has unparalleled flight control. In real life, Dragonflies are one of the best predators on the land for this reason, mostly. Having four wings operating independently of each other gives dragonflies unprecedented speed and maneuverability to the creature, allowing it to pursue other flyers or snatch prey before they even realize it. Skarmory having eight wings operating separately means that, should its brain power be devoted enough to do so, it can fly nearly flawlessly in the air. The armor on its body is confirmed to be iron or steel by the Pokedex entries. However, considering some of the other Pokemon and their egregious entries, the fact that steel cannot be produced naturally will have to be overlooked. Fortunately, the number of entries claiming iron outweigh those of steel, but the entry regarding steel is in a high cast of lore consideration in my opinion. All the same, its consumption of iron is more than likely, considering Laron also eats iron in one of its Pokedex entries. Its armor is formed when it's young. Skarmory nests in bramble bushes whose outer thorns scrape and scar the skin of the young. This hints that the iron is more of a scar tissue rather than a normally forming carapace. Or perhaps this initial scar tissue growth inspires the overall construction of a carapace or shell. The swift growth of metal armor is actually not far off from something we see in real life. Antlers on deer, made from calcium as their bone, actually are one of the fastest growing cells in life. The only thing that beats them are cancer cells. So for armor to grow rapidly and be replaced every year is not impossible. Considering the average weight of a suit of armor in real life, Skarmory's weight being lighter than the average man is not absurd. Birds in general have very unburdened anatomy so as to ease flight, and Skarmory is surely no exception to this. The horns look more like a dorsal fin one sees on a shark or dolphin than an actual horn. The purpose of a dorsal fin is to prevent sudden rolling and to assist in turning and swimming. Its presence on Skarmory's head implies that it serves the same purpose for only its head, as its strange next function could bring about issues during flight. The dorsal horn of sorts could also serve more for more muscle connection points for the jaw's strength, allowing Skarmory to crush even the strongest of prey. Horns in creatures in real life are usually used primarily to show off fitness, secondarily for combat. In Skarmory's case, there could be no different. Having the ability to get enough extra iron in their diet to grow a larger horn than normal is appealing when looking for a mate. We see potential evidence for the horn being used for mating competition or perhaps combat in the neck rings, which are interlocking concentric rings that allow Skarmory to retract its neck into its body. Skarmory's peculiar tail likely serves one of two purposes. What's most likely is that this tail helps keep itself stable in the air, similar to the horn on its head. The peculiar shape, however, gently hints against this. That hole instead would help its second likely purpose, that being stunning creatures. The closest tail shape I could find in nature is that of some species of sharks that use their similarly shaped tails to stun creatures as well as quickly dive downwards. Skarmory may do both of these things for hunting. Its habitat often has big, tough Pokemon, while its flight would benefit from being able to dive swiftly. The holes support the former, with somewhat similar holes being seen on spanking paddles. Regarding the neck rings, those repeated rings on its neck are separate sections of armor from the head, body, and each other. We can see in one of its sprites that it can extend and shrink its neck thanks to, presumably, slinking each concentric ring together. This gives it the ability to even move its head at all. Skarmory are, across much of the show as well as the games, found in rocky mountainous habitats. More often than not, these habitats are lacking in plant life to a notable extent. In these rocky habitats, Skarmory nests in bramble bushes, which is likely a mutualistic relationship between the two creatures. The bramble provides protection for Skarmory from the rain, as well as protection for the young, 
while skarmory scare away any animals that would wish to eat the berries or the shoots and buds of the bramble. Regarding their nesting habits, I theorize that skarmory, despite nesting on the ground, are altricial. This means that they're born without feathers, among other things. The scratching of the bramble bushes on the bare skin is what inspires the growth of the armor plating, as we talked about earlier. Altricial birds usually don't nest on the ground, but skarmory have terrifying presences and may leave a parent behind to watch the young while rearing them. But the presence of feathers would prevent, or at least dampen, the scarring from bramble. In terms of their diet, skarmory likely mainly eat Aeron, Magnemite, and Golbat. These creatures, by one means or another, are full of iron. Skarmory are most always found near one of these three Pokemon in all of their games. Additionally, their theorized adaptation supports these as targets. Aeron and Magnemite's iron shells will be crushed well by Skarmory's strong jaw force in both the biting and the chewing aspect, and their parents' protection will be ignored by Skarmory's excellent speed and flight control, allowing it to swoop in swiftly then immediately out, stunning anything if it needs to. In Golbat's case, Skarmory's speed allows it to chase it down, and the stunning helps here as well. Skarmory may not always be able to get sufficient iron from the creatures listed above. In that case, it's possible that Skarmory also eats the dirt, or iron ore, as stated in Lairon's entry. In real life, animals lap at salt deposits or eat particularly salty dirt in order to maintain their hydration requirements. It's possible that Skarmory does this to maintain its iron levels for blood, as well as constant repair and replacement of its iron shells. With a strong bite force, it may be able to even eat the iron out of exposed ore deposits. Skarmory likely hunts similar to peregrine falcons in real life. Its top speed being so high, as well as its actions in the anime, as in, doing exactly what peregrine falcons do when hunting, tells us this. It makes sense that it would need to reach these speeds in order to nab Aeron or get the jump on Golbat when hunting. Now in terms of their behavior, Skarmory are huge jerks. A few times in the anime, as well as in one instance in Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, Skarmory are seen picking up various things and simply taking them away. It's possible that this is some sort of obscure territorial defense, but they more often than not simply drop whatever it is they're taking away. I think it's personally that they're just giant punks like sea otters or dolphins are in real life. Now Skarmory are easily aggravated as well. Team Rocket flying into its territory warrants, of course, a territorial warning. It's immediately followed by an attack, before Meowth can even translate it. In another episode, Skarmory blasts Meowth and Ko away because it was hit by a snowball from another Pokemon. Now, they may be jerks, but they are loyal jerks. Skarmory in the show are repeatedly shown being very loyal to their trainers. The Skarmory mentioned earlier was carrying out territorial attacks for a Steelix, to which it was subordinate, and it even had its own squad of Magneton goons that assisted it. It still bullied the crap out of a Torkoal though, so it is a jerk just a loyal one. In terms of how Skarmory interact with humans, rather how humans interact with Skarmory, we mostly see them as contestants and athletes. Skarmory's speed and flight make it excellent in aerial contests such as the Poke Ringer. This ability to fly is also employed by rangers, who use Skarmory to get around. It's also used for its ability to defog, and its bulky armor and theoretical push power help it move objects around. Skarmory's bulk and defogging potential is realized better by Pokemon trainers, however. Its impressive bulk and defensive typing affords it excellent survivability. Here, its armor matters more. However, Skarmory's sharp wings are historically used by warriors as well as presently used by chefs. The latter seems a little unclean if you ask me, but that's not particularly relevant. The sharp wings, speed, and durability find much better use as soldiers, being used both as scouts and as frontline foot soldiers. Or talon soldiers? And that was Skarmory, a fan favorite of many as well as a competitive staple with somewhat reasonable Pokedex entries. Comment down below what Pokemon you'd like to see next, and I'll be back with a video on its evolution one. And tell me what you'd like me to focus on, whether that's Pokemon interactions or interactions with the environment or biology and anatomy as well. Thank you so much for watching. This video series is basically my dream, combining my three favorite things, teaching, ecology, and Pokemon. I hope to do so, so many more of these in the future.